Welcome everybody out to our essential oil class tonight. We are talking about bergamot. Bergamot essential oil of truth. <laughs> Sorry. Just had to no. put that in there. Bergamot. So for those of you who don't know, bergamot is actually a citrus and it smells really good. Kind of like the cross between a, I don't know. Grapefruit a, and... Grapefruit and orange, a lime and a lemon all kind of <laughs> crossed together. I don't know. But <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway, so here's Jade Baldwin. She did a really good job on preparing for bergamot today. Okay. This is my favorite, one of my favorite oils. Um, do you guys have any experiences with bergamot? I know lots of ladies love this oil. Yeah. No, I, I had experience with it when you told me to use it after an energy healing session. <laughs> I like it a lot, and it did help me with my self-confidence. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's a good secret we're going to reveal at the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers. Yeah. I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me at all? Yes, yeah. we can. Oh, good. How do I mute myself? <laughs> Don't worry, we'll take care of it. Okay. <laughs> so I've had some great experiences with bergamot too. I've never done this on my phone. We're traveling. So we so said bergamot. You said bergamot. Okay. Oh, I say bergamot. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very. It's been very, very, very helpful for me for years for um, restless leg after I do birth work and I'm, I'm sleep deprived. I rub my legs down with bergamot and it's fantastic. Oh, uh -huh. so I hope everybody heard that. That's awesome. So I we put it in a blend for a pregnant woman who was having restless leg, and she said that it helped a lot. Uh -huh. That's really good because it helps with spasms. There's an amazing oil for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you can, uh, I tell people sometimes to use balance oil up and down the spine, but add bergamot too if it's really, you know, bad on the leg so it's excellent thank you for sharing that um anybody else want to share it's excellent in a pina colada i don't know I just thought it might be. yeah it's good, for drink. <laughs> it's, good for drink. it's good it's a good one to drink yes i drink it's a very good one to drink um this is dia can you Hi. hear me yes hey dia okay i'm chiming in for a minute i've got my three kids so <laughs> um but i love bergamo um i say i say bergamo too um, it's tomato, tomato. But, um, I've I've used it just after just like having like very stressful situations. Um, and just you know, like one example, like when I was driving and a truck almost ran me off of the like freeway, and I literally went into like a fight or flight, you know, obviously type of state, and you know, really in any kind of situation where my body goes into that fight or flight, it really helps to just bring it all down. It's your magic <laughs> oil. To, it is. It's, it seriously is an amazing oil for um, calming um, the body and like the physical stuff that happens when you get into that state. Um, but yeah, it's amazing. So there's my, there's my chime in. Thank you. Thank awesome. you. Thank you guys. <laughs> for awesome. doing this. That's really good. You know what? That's that's basically the gist of what we wanted to share with people. Um, so it's amazing for calming. Um, so, you know, if you are a teacher and you're teaching kids, a whole bunch of kids in a classroom, you want everyone to be calm. So it's a wonderful oil to calm people down. Which is really mm -hmm. funny because it's also a good oil to kind of cheer people up or because uh -huh. it's got those citrus. It's uplifting. To it. Yeah. Yep. It's I just thought that was kind of funny. Yes, but. it just balances. It really <laughs> does. Um, and it's a wonderful oil for confidence, of course. And kids need that confidence, and adults need that confidence. Um, the other thing that you may not know is that it's amazing for bedtime for people who are, have a hard time sleeping. Um, so it's an amazing oil for that. Uh, we don't tell people very often, but um, it's from people who can't sleep. People um, who suffer from not being able to sleep very easily. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to say the disease name, but there's, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if that's you. <laughs> and it's cleansing for the skin, very cleansing. Uh, <laughs> so 
So, okay, all right. Yeah, we'll scoot our screen down here. So if you're looking, if you're listening to our call on the podcast, um, when you have a moment, go to jbolton.com forward slash Bergamot. Okay. So um, I just wanted to share a quick story of um, you know, uh, how I use the Bergamot. Um, so one of my first introductions you know, there's something missing here. I think something about to delete it. <laughs> um, anyways, one day when I was teaching at the school, um, I think as I was just getting ready in the morning and I had my necklace diffuser and I was picking the oils that I needed to use for the day. And I came across, I just reached for the bergamot and uh, I just smelt that and it just grabbed me. So I just felt like, whoa. That was amazing and it made me so happy. So I decided to put a bunch on my necklace diffuser and I was smelling that all day long and I wish I could just spray myself with it because it's so yummy. Um, yeah, so after about three months, um, you know, I picked it up and it wasn't as yummy as it used to be. So, you know, as I reflected, I felt like, hey, you know, the last three months I was actually um, struggling uh, with a decision the decision was to quit my job and to pursue doTERRA full-time um, and you know I was struggling with self-doubt so obviously Bergamot was there to help and then um, you know I just thought hey yesterday I um, had a talk with my supervisor and I told her that I was gonna um, not do teaching next year and she asked me what I was going to do and a little bit sheepishly I said I'm going to pursue a doTERRA career and and she was like good on you Jade and she was so happy for me um, anyways when I kind of made that decision and I felt brave enough um, and I told her that um, I was done using bergamot apparently because the next day when I smelt it I felt like hey it's, it's not as yummy as it used to be it's still very nice but it just didn't have that hold on me like it did. So I was really appreciative that it was there for me as I um, learned to love myself, feel uh, good enough and resolve um, my self-doubts. So that was really powerful. So there's something about this computer. Sometimes when I paste half of the things, and yeah, paste again, so I don't know. Anyways, I'm just gonna scroll up okay. now. Okay. So bergamot is from Italy um, and it's cold pressed, just like most of all of our um, citrus oils, which means um, that you need to be careful with um, UV exposure. So you can use it on your skin and they encourage you to, to do so, but you really need to uh, make sure you don't get direct sunlight uh, within the first six, uh, I think maybe 12 hours just to be safe, okay? So uh, like we said, bergamot is fantastic for sleep. So I know that uh, sometimes um, we use different oils for sleep. And um, if you still struggle, guys, um, then maybe bergamot is your oil. Okay, there's something about bergamot that is super calming. Um, and, uh, you know, just diffuse it before bed, half an hour before bed. And um, maybe it's the oil that will help you sleep. Okay. Um, anybody used it for sleep before? I have. Yep. Great so for sleep. I've done it once, I think. Um, wild orange and bergamot is what I felt like that, that one day. <laughs> and it was nice because it makes you happy and you're relaxed. So it's very interesting. So you know we have mm -hmm. like different oils for um, like people have different things preventing yeah. them from sleeping mm -hmm. yeah i think perhaps the bergamot goes to that um like what dia was saying with the uh, they're calming when, yeah. you, when you go into that stress yeah. um, response nerves, yeah. some of that fight or flight so if you've had a terrible day and you just need to get down off that yeah if that works for you in mm -hmm. that way that that's probably why it, why it would help you sleep mm -hmm. yeah um well going back to um what dia was saying uh, this is amazing for the nerves. Um, the other oil, just to help you recover from some like shock, some attack of, uh, you know, when you had an argument with somebody or whatever, your body's still shaken. Um, and the other oil is uh, coriander. So bergamot coriander. So that's really good. 
Okay, so we're up to skin now. Uh, so it alleviates skin infections. Um, so here is a blend for a bath soak. Okay, so when we have those itchy skin all over our body, um, this will help you relax. Uh, so it's uh, two cups of um, Epsom salt, and this is in a big bath, okay? Uh, four drops of bergamot, two drops of white fur, and uh, three drops of um, Roman chamomile, and four drops of helichrysium, and you soak for 25, 30 minutes. Um, basically, it just helps you um, relax and calm down. Um, and you do this a few times a week. Uh, well, most of the skin problems is uh, emotionally about irritations, irritations with life, with situations. Um, so when it starts to flare up and you're uncomfortable, um, you know, this is a good soak to kind of um, calm down and refocus again. Okay, so um, make sure you're careful with, um, so not uh, soaking yourself during the day you can do it in the evening and then go to bed so that'd be awesome and then you know you've slept all day long so in the morning you probably can go out in the sun again but um i wouldn't do it right before like, I go like, out. yeah like all um citrus oils uh -huh. you don't want to go out in the sun after you put the citrus oil mm -hmm. on you yep it doesn't burn you or anything it just increases your skin sensitivity yes and if you UV rays. if you get direct sunlight for a long period of time it does have a little um tan on that area yeah. all right um the other thing is they put bergamot in a lot of scrubs and sugar scrubs and soaps so if you are a soap maker i've got a few friends that make soap they're very talented um you know it's one of those oils that you can put in there because it actually very cleansing for the skin um for some reason it's uh, really helps with that mm -hmm. okay and so if you have any skin infections or mm -hmm. Yep, so we've got yep. lots of disease names for those skin infections, but it's amazing. But you remember, when you're using this, and it helps you on a emotional and spiritual level at the same time. Okay. All right. Any, uh, any comments? Any comments? So a lot of times we we say this, and, and um, we just had our our, our website of. Um, so Tara uh, went through and they gave us all these things to suggestions um, in terms of um, compliance. compliance, like speaking compliantly. So we're talking about things like uh, skin infections. So some some skin infections you're thinking about like psoriasis. And those are those are all you know. There's a big um, group of skin infections we we can be talking about. Um, this will alleviate because it helps support the skin. Um, which is, you know, just your body, a body system, um, and cl cleanse the skin. So anytime you want to address any sort of disease or something like psoriasis or whatever it is, you look at the body system that you're supporting, mm -hmm. um, strengthening to be able to deal with that. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes we just focus on the disease name instead of the whole system. Um, and it helps us if we find out what the system yep. is. Okay. Yep. And if, for, yeah. I was going to say, would it help with eczema as well, like any kind of skin condition? Yes. Yes. And then with the with the joints, is that like um, like elderly people uncomfortable joints, or like post workout, or the, like both? Uh, both. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So like swelling. Got it. Mm -hmm. Has anybody used it on eczema before? I know we've got a couple of people on this call who have had eczema. Yeah. Mm. Okay. All right. So the next thing is appetite. Um, and it's mostly for those who have lost their appetite. Um, but always the oils will balance us. So even oils like Slim and Sassy, um, it's supposed to be an appetite suppressant. Most people think of it that way because most of us eat more than we should. Um, but when you have a situation where somebody doesn't eat as much or don't feel like eating, it actually stimulates um, hunger again. So it's amazing um, to help us balance. Uh, so I feel like sometimes 
um, when I am stressed and worried, I don't feel hungry um, and I don't enjoy my food. So a couple of drops of bergamot in the water helps you know me renew and refresh again, and then I get to enjoy the food. I, I met a few people um, that uh, one guy he says he's been sick for a while, and he says all the food, no matter what it is, it all tastes the same to him. So um, you know you might want to just try bergamot in your water and drink that and see if things start changing and um, it'll be sort of a cleansing tea for you. Okay, so that's interesting. Any questions or comments on that? Okay, um, so we mentioned joint support, alleviate sore and uncomfortable joints for anybody, for anybody really. So dilute it with a fractionated coconut oil and massage it where you need it. Okay, so it's another option for you. We've got uh, wonderful deep blue and aroma touch, um, but you know, sometimes people need a little bit of fruit salad. <laughs> <laughs> so try that. Uh, one time I've used um, lemon and uh, wild orange and um, what was it, lime for one of my friend's hips and it was really nice. She said it worked right away. So bergamot is another citrus oil, the oil that might help with that. So just try and see. All right, so this is one of the first recipes that I received. Um, it's muscle cramps and um, I was in Sydney and my friend had a, um, a surgery on one of her ovaries and I took her to see Dr. Hill when he came and visited. Um, and she, she came up to him and she, she told him what happened and he said, oh, that's what happened to his wife. His wife just had that surgery too. Um, and he said, make sure you get bergamot and uh, Roman chamomile and frankincense, mix it up in fractionated coconut oil, um, just all equal portions. And he said, just rub it near the area of concern because when you start healing, um, it's not the, uh, the scar that will hurt, it's the, the spasms. Uh, and um, muscle cramping that is going to be the most painful. So um, she said that was, uh, it worked wonders for her. And um, so we're really grateful for that. And ever since then, I remembered this recipe. So um, it goes with other areas of your body where you're cramping and stuff too. Um, so legs, okay. Um, got some friends that uh, get uh, Charlie horses or whatever. They call them um, before bed <laughs> and or in the middle of the night. Uh, so that's one thing that we could do to mix it up and see if that would work for you. Okay. Cool, huh? All right. Um, the other thing is sore throat. Um, we, we have so many different oils for, for sore throat, but um, this is a nice tasting one. Um, not like last week. <laughs> The oregano kind of hot uh, but um, yeah try this and, and see if you uh, enjoy it I uh, might consider clove oil mixing it with that too as a, a, dis a different um, alternative to um, some of the other oils we've suggested okay, so you can use that for sore throat all right and uh, the last one on our list for body is digestion so it will gently detox your gastrointestinal tract. Um, and uh, if you want to, you can rub it on your tummy actually um, to support digestion. So we have um, these little, I think most of you on the call probably have, have it too, the little keychains with our oils in there. But sometimes, you know, I've given oils away and then I'm like, oh, okay, I don't need my, I don't have my digest then when I need it. Um, so I look through my keychain and if I have bergamot or lemon, and it works just as well. So <laughs> that's another alternative. Okay, if you need something to support your digestive system and you're going out and you want to put some oils in your water, that's a, a good option. All right, anyone want to say anything, add anything to it? I love to use bergamot for children with a sore throat. It's very nicely tolerated. Ooh. Yeah, thank you, Debbie. That's good to know. Debbie works with children and babies a lot, so 
right information. Okie dokie. Let's go to the mind. So that's the end of the body mm -hmm. kind of part of it. <clears throat> Anybody have any other body uh, applications? Physical? Does anybody use it for any of these um, things? I haven't before, but I'm sure in the future. <laughs> I've only used it for emotional stuff. I haven't used it for any body things yet. Oh, okay. I diffuse it often, and I diffused it one time in a class, and I've never diffused it since because they all fell asleep. <laughs> Not really fell asleep, but they were all yawning, and they lost, you know, they lost interest and needed to go home to sleep. So it's sort of like you're diffusing a lavender. It's like that. So that's good. It's good to know. <laughs> oh, that's yep. good. All so right. So take note, everyone. Don't diffuse it during a class. You want them to pay attention. <laughs> Okay, so let's go to the mind. Uh, Bhagavan is the oil of self-acceptance. So according to the Emotions and Essential Oil book, the negative emotions, Bhagavan will help us shift our, the following, uh, despair, low self-esteem, self-judgment, unlovable, and hopeless. And the positive properties that we can adopt are the following. Uh, self-acceptance, optimism, confidence, hopeful, lovable, good enough. Okay, so Bergamot really helps people let go of that self-judgment and it helps us love and accept ourselves. You know, when you love and you accept yourself, you're not so worried about um, rejection anymore because if people reject the message uh, that you're trying to you know, tell them, it's not about you, it's not personal. It's like, okay, you don't want it, that's okay, that's fine. It's nothing about me. Um, so it's really good to separate that. Uh, I know a lot of us self-sabotage because we're just so worried about um, other people rejecting us when in reality we've rejected ourselves first. And um, then uh, you know, we're hypersensitive to other people um, rejecting us or we read into it or find evidence for it. So when you heard already that Bergamot is very calming <laughs> to the point where it puts people to sleep during your class. Um, so, you know, if you want to diffuse Bergamot um, before bed, that's a good one, or just to calm people down so people are not so rowdy. So I um, read that we can do it in classrooms and at work um, and at home. So we have the hospital, Vanderbilt Hospital, and they actually diffuse all the different citrus oils um, from doTERRA for a, a period of time, and they did a research about that too. So they said that it was very calming and relaxing and people stressed less and um, people had a better work environment. Okay, so bergamot calming. All right, so the other thing is self-confidence. So you can, like I, I did um, before, just put a drop or two of bergamot in your necklace diffuser and smell it throughout the day to boost your self-confidence. Um, some people would add um, good uh, self-loving affirmations with that too. So you can do that. Okay. Uh, the other thing too with uh, the mind is that it shifts you from that negative um, feeling to the positive. Um, so here, this is something that I got from Dr. Susan Lawton. Um, cypress, marjoram, and bergamot mixed together will help people um, go through grieving. So you can put that combination in a diffuser. Um, whatever grieving you're going through, it's important. Um, the duality of things is important. You, you need to have the negative and the dark to appreciate the good. Uh, so if you do go through that grieving, um, it's, you know, nice to have some help. So cypress and marjoram and bergamot will help kind of go in there and cleanse things out and, and uh, grieve it all out instead of half grieve and, and then save the rest for later. <laughs> so. so I've always thought of a um, console as a good uh, essential oil to mm -hmm. recommend to someone who's grieving, but this gives us another possibility there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. 
So anyways, you can see Cyprus is about moving forward. Just keep going, okay? And Madrum is very calming, yeah. So that's Bergamot um, and the mind. Does anyone want to add anything to that? Any other emotional uses that anybody uses for? So I, know, I know Jamie uses oils for emotional healing. Do you want to share anything, Jamie? Uh oh, you're, you're muted. I think I feel like when I'm hating on myself, that's when I diffuse it um, to help sort of calm myself down and give myself a bit of self love, I guess. Mm. Yeah, so when you you beat yourself up too much, you build that yeah. to remind yourself that it's not that bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man you guys but i'm always the hardest on myself of anybody like everybody in the world could judge me but i'm still going to be worse on myself than it, all of them put together you know and I, I think that's what bergamot helps me with the most it's just going easier and being a little more forgiving with myself and, and allow, allowing myself to make mistakes and grow yeah that's awesome okay anybody else I diffuse it for my kids as well when I feel like they are hard on themselves for not being able to do the things that they want to do. Like um, with Savannah, she's learning how to write and I think she gets really frustrated with herself. <laughs> and, you know, Violet is, you know, learning how to speak and she gets really angry a lot. <laughs> So I diffuse that at night as well because I know it's calming. Yeah. So it's also good for sleep. Yeah, excellent. That's right. We forget these little ones. They have high expectations too. Yeah, perfectionist. <laughs> monkey see, monkey do. Monkey see, monkey do. That's right. If mommy is perfectionist, the kids are too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's really good for everybody to remember that. Okay. So we're moving on to the spirit. Uh, so this helps it encourage us to have more optimism. So it's, sometimes it's hard to stay positive as much as we want to, or we know we should. Um, just things happen and it makes um, our life just a little bit brighter when we diffuse it and remember to um, have courage to share that inner, inner self with the world. Um, I think this is one of the major players of um, my transformation because I know that I used to be, um, I used to hold myself back a lot. And so Bergamot helps you kind of, you know, allow the world to see the inner you and be okay with them and accepting yourself. Because okay? sometimes we, we have a mask and we want to please everyone. Um, and you know, it, we were not sure if people are gonna love us if we are totally ourselves and if we're goofy or silly. Um, a bergamot helps us feel relaxed enough to just be ourselves and, um, and show the world who we really are. And then, um, you know, then you're more relaxed. So bergamot uh, allows you to also absorb love, light and brightness. So remember back when we were talking about the body and how it helps you with appetite, um, it's the cells of your body saying, okay, I'm ready to assimilate. I'm ready to assimilate love, but I'm also ready to assimilate um, nutrition. So I know a lot of people can, that eat well, uh, but their body refuses to absorb a lot of nutrition. Um, because they don't feel worthy or something, you know. So the the fact that they go out and eat organic and everything is one good thing, but it's not um, the all everything else that they need to look at. They really need to look at uh, feeling self love, self acceptance, and then their cells will open up and and assimilate nutrition too, as we assimilate love and um, good things in the world. And uh, coincidentally, it allows us to have more abundance. Abundance in, as in more time, more money, more friends, more love, more peace, 
that's what abundance really means. Okay. Um, so uh, that's pretty much it. I'd say one more thing actually about self judgment. Um, you know, because I spent lots of time with Bergamot. Bergamot has become a close friend of mine. Um, so what I learned from Bergamot is that it's not my job to judge. And so if I stop judging myself, I stop judging other people and I hand that job over to God because we're still in the middle of our journey. Um, who am I to think that, you know, I am not worthy and um, I'm, you know, poo-poo and, you know, we're not too great. So I just leave it in God's hands and I just do my very best um, and quit taking over his job. So that when I think about that, I think, oh, you know, I'll do my best and if I mess up, I'll try again. Um, so, but I'm not going to play God and start judging myself and thinking I'm terrible. Um, so that really helps me alleviate a lot of pressure and pain. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's all I have to share about uh, Bergamot. I'd like to hear from you guys what you think and maybe what you learned tonight. I hadn't thought about using them with my kids before, but I think I, I think I will. That kind of hit home for me, the whole monkey see monkey do. And, and I've always been a, a self-hating perfectionist, I guess. <laughs> so, and I see that in my own, my own girls a lot when they uh, get something wrong or they make a mistake, they tend to kind of shut down and, and not, you know, see a way out or move forward. And I think that this would probably help them a great deal. Yeah, we naturally punish ourselves, huh? As if, if we don't punish ourselves, we won't learn. <laughs> so that's really good. Yeah. Well, I think more so that it's the fear that if we don't, you know, try that hard that everything's going to fall apart. Like it's the fear that things won't work out the way you want it to. So I think we try so hard to be you know, that perfect person or do things, you know, the best way you can when, you know, sometimes it's just not like, sometimes it's just not, and you just can't do it and that's okay. And sometimes it's okay to be human. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. One of the affirmations I gave to um, a friend recently was, um, I forgive myself for being human. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But I could totally see my little nieces, you know, doing a few things and, oh, okay, can't do it. <laughs> they just Grandma. lose it. And they lose it. Lay on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> give up. Oh, trauma. <laughs> feeling powerless. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really important. Well, hello, Peaches. Looks like you have some visitors. Uh, yeah, my, my son and his friend, so <laughs> they left. <laughs> yeah, how you guys doing tonight? Good, good. I'm glad I just got in not that long ago, and uh, we were out earlier. And um, I'm glad I caught the tail end of that, about eating healthy, that last piece there and stuff, because I've been uh, working, you know, trying to work on that. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to use bergamot a little more often. I don't know if you remember, um, you, we were talking about something, it was a while in one of the previous classes, probably a couple months back, and uh, you had mentioned bergamot, but I couldn't buy it because it was sold out. And everybody would say how wonderful it is for perfumes, this, that, and I couldn't get it. It was sold out. And then I guess like a month later, it became available. So I said, let me get this. And I, I got it. I, I, uh, the smell is okay. It didn't like grab me like I expected it to because everybody speaks about it so highly, you know. <laughs> but yeah, it's getting there. I did diffuse it maybe once or twice, but it didn't like grab, you know, I didn't grasp onto it. But I guess I'm going to start having to uh, use that now since it helps you with the absorption of your nutrition and things like that. It helps you to develop healthier eating habits. I think that would be very beneficial awesome. for me. <laughs> um, yep, you reminded me of something. So for the listeners, um, you know, if we go 
to the emotions here. Let's go down up to the emotions again. Um, for those who may not like it as much, not that you don't like it, the peaches, but for the people who smell and go, oh, it's, it's okay, we not really like it. It's about being willing to accept yourself. So you might have gone really far uh, to the point where you really reject yourself. So, and you're not ready to kind of make friends with yourself <laughs> and accept who you are. Perhaps um, you're not optimistic about it. Perhaps you're, you're not confident and you've spent a lifetime feeling not good enough. Okay. So um, just make a decision, actually. It's not that difficult. Make a decision to, I'm going to work on loving myself and be optimistic about myself and feeling good enough. And sometimes just that decision alone will help change things. And you can just have a smell and um, see how you, know, you go, gauge yourself. Um, Marissa and I went to Appalachia Cola um, it's a funny name, but it's a it's a place down here, and we met some amazing people. And there was one lady in particular; she was so beautiful. Um, she smelled an oil, and she was like, "Oh, it's okay." And then we told her what the emotion was, and she's like, "Yeah, okay." And she accepted that. And then she, you know, two minutes later, she smelled it, and she's like, "Yum, yeah, I like it now. Good." And then she just worked through one oil at a time, just speedy. Um, I was really, really impressed with her. So we can do that. The idea is just to make a choice and a decision. Sometimes we're very passive and we don't realize we haven't chosen to love ourselves and that's it. So. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I feel like, you know, I feel like, I feel, I, I don't know. I just, <laughs> I'm saying I don't know. I feel like I do like love myself, but I just think that the patterns, I just develop patterns over my lifetime, probably associated with family and, you know, my social group that have made me, you know, make wrong choices for myself. And I think, you know, I just know that I need to make better decisions. I do, you know, I, I feel like I have pretty good esteem, you know, and, uh, but as far as like, just, the, just getting out of those bad habits you know sometimes i'll be good for a minute and then the relapse you know and stuff and then feel bad about it and everything you know i don't know if that's just tied to some kind of deep psyche or whatever but i that's where i'm at with you know certain things especially with like getting healthy and getting up off the wagon and exercising more and maybe just making different choices i see i am making choices it's little by little I'm drinking more water and um, I'm taking the, the vitamins, uh, doTERRA vitamins and some other healthy things and, and health foods to try and help and making smoothies. <laughs> so it's just little, sometimes, you know, I relapse here and there, but it's just, you know, a start. And if that can help me. Right. You're really doing great. And it could be just a little bit of a lack of confidence in yourself thinking that, you know, you may not be exactly perfect every time. And then you're a bit disappointed in yourself for not, you know, staying on the van. Yeah. What do you yeah. call a bandwagon? <laughs> I don't know what the <laughs> saying is. Um, but yeah, it's, a, it's more of a confidence thing, it sounds like. So, you know, that's good. So you, you've taken care of a lot of the other aspects of Bergamont, but um, yeah, we'll work. We'll all have things to work on. So that's all. Awesome. Okay. Mima. Thank you, Jay, yeah. so much. So we'll, um, and if anybody else has anything we can add to that, or we can add to it, otherwise um, we'll end this call. Yeah. I'd like to add something. Yeah. Um, just about what Peaches was saying, like we, we, we do think that we love ourselves and care for ourselves, but I think like if you actually look deeper, Mm -hmm. If you actually take care of yourself, um, like say, say like drinking more water, then that's a sign that you're showing yourself more love because you're, you want the best for yourself and you, you're um, appreciating yourself. So if you think about if you want to exercise or you don't want to exercise, you know, it's about that choice where you, you say to yourself, um, I'm going to look after me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give myself some love. I'm going to do this because I, it's good for me. That sort of thing. So you kind of have to walk yourself through sometimes because I think it's been 
like a habit to sort of forget about yourself and take care of others first. So I think it's something that um, we weren't taught as a child. So it's, it doesn't come naturally and, and you think, oh, oh yeah, I do love myself, but really does your actions sort of like speak louder than your words? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So physically love yourself and then you can really believe that you do, right? Yeah. So like with my kids, I'm trying to, I'm trying to teach them from an early age how to love themselves. So you can just like, you can say to them, oh, take care of yourself, but they don't really understand that, right? So if I say to them, oh, you know, um, if you go to the toilet more often, you're getting rid of the yucky stuff in your body and you're loving yourself and you're taking care of yourself. And I say, good job. Like, thank you for taking care of your own body. Like, I explain that to them so that they understand that that is a part of the self-love. Mm-hmm. So Jamie is my sister, Peaches, um, and <laughs> she's saying hi. Uh, <laughs> she's, she's in Australia and um, she's an energy healer too. Um, you know, yeah. her, her little girl, uh, uh-huh. she, she doesn't like anything dirty. So she's in preschool and she oh my God. <laughs> will hold really? it in and wait till she goes home to go to the bathroom because oh, no. she doesn't want to do it at school because it's kind of dirty. She's that kind of in a finicky kind of person. Mm-hmm. So Jamie, encouraging her to go often and uh-huh. uh, to flush things out. Um, uh-huh. Yeah. So, and it's a sign of self-love, basically. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so, <laughs> thank you so much, Jamie. I, I get exactly what you're saying, and I think, like you said, like habits. Sometimes we work. We're taught that we're taught to care and look around and be respectful of others, and we don't. We're not taught to also respect ourselves and to, you know, or I shouldn't say not to respect ourselves, but we're just taught to care about other people more so than our own selves and care about other people. I'm a nurse. I care about it, everything. And I'm like, oh, I got to take care of me too, you know? So <laughs> this right, whole yeah. journey with dealing with the essential oils and everything is a part of that. And I am just so grateful. I was like, where was I? What was going on? You know, that I'm just now discovering this for about a year now already. So thank you guys so very much. I appreciate that. I appreciate the feedback. (laughs) I think that's all of us. Like, where was the oil? (laughs) Which we had in all our lives. So it's awesome. It's awesome that we're bringing back this lost art and we're sharing it with the world. Mm -hmm. All right. So I think we can end our call. If anybody else doesn't have anything um, to add to this. So bergamot, awesome oils, great for skin, very calming. Uh, good for sore throats, digestion, and amazing for self-love. Okay. Wow. All right. So, and this recording, the podcast. Thank you.